Hi, it's Paddy Hirsch at Marketplace, here to talk about this fraud suit that the SEC has brought against Goldman Sachs. Now, it looks incredibly complicated on the surface. We've got collateralized debt obligations, we've got credit default swaps, we've got synthetics. It just looks like it's going to blow your mind. But I think at the heart of it, it's actually pretty simple. And the way I look at it, it's kind of like a gambler and a bookie getting together to make money on a horse race. Okay, so before we meet our horse, let's meet our, uh, our players. Firstly, we've got our, uh, here's our, our bookie, okay, and this is Mr. Fabrice Goldman, all right. And then we have our, he's a, he loves the horses, this guy. And then we have our, our gambler, okay, and our gambler is uh, Mr. Paul, all right. And uh, Mr. Paul goes to uh, Fabrice and he says, look, mate, you know, I know you know the, uh, you know the bookie business, but I know the betting business and I have a way that we can make money on a horse. And Fabrice is like, okay, how are you gonna do that? And he goes, well, first thing we need to do is we need to buy a horse, okay? So Fabrice pops out and he buys a horse. Okay, it's this beautiful nag. Here she is, lovely filly. Okay, and he's calling her Abacus. All right, now here's the thing about, um, about Fabrice, is he doesn't know the first thing about looking after a horse, all right? So what he does is he outsources the, um, he outsources the looking after this horse to some, a company called ACA Stables. All right, here it is. Now here's where the strategy comes in because Mr. Paul says to Fabrice, listen, I want you to go to ACA and I want you to represent me, okay, as a, recommend me as a, uh, as a trainer, someone who can advise them on feeding the horse. But whatever you do, don't tell them that I'm gonna be betting against the horse, okay? Because the strategy is that I'm gonna bet against this thing and I'm gonna feed it stuff that's gonna make it lose, okay, as opposed to winning. So Fabrice is like, okay, I like the sound of that, and I can make some money on the side, perhaps. So what he does is he introduces Mr. Paul to ACA, okay, and in fact he says, look, Mr. Paul's actually gonna be betting on ACA to win the Grand National in three weeks' time. Meanwhile, Mr. Paul says, all right, here, I've got a bunch of dog food that I got, uh, that I rescued from, it fell off a lorry recently, and I want you to feed that to the horse. People at ACA are like, well, really? You're kidding me? He goes, no, it's the best quality dog food. Really good dog food. So, you, know, you know, grade A dog food. And these days, that's what all the big trainers are using. They're, you know, it's got full of, it's got mineral, sorry, minerals and vitamins, all sorts of good stuff. Horse is going to like go like a rocket on the day. ACA is like, okay, well, you know, Mr. Fabrice, who owns the horse, recommended this guy. So we're, that's what we'll do. We'll feed the horse full of dog food. Meanwhile, Fabrice is going out and he's collecting bets. So he's going out to people and he's going to say, my horse Abacus, it's going to look at the form it's got, look at its parentage, it's going to win. It's got a whole loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of people, loads of punters who are prepared to bet on their, on good old Abacus to romp in first. So what do they do? They put a big, big, big bunch of money together and hand it all over to Fabrice for the, and, um, for, for the race day. Now, meanwhile, Mr. Paul says to Fabrice, right, meanwhile, I am going to lay a bet with you also, but I am going to bet, okay, that the horse is going to lose. It's going to come in dead last, okay? So here's my bet, okay, for the horse to come in last. All right, come the day. Abacus trots out there onto the, uh, onto the, uh, onto the horse race, onto, into the race, full of dog food, has a terrible time, wobbling around all over the place, comes in dead last. These people who bet that Abacus is going to win lose all their money, all disappears. This guy, Mr. Paul, who's bet that the horse is going to come last, having fed it with dog food, that's right, he gets a huge big bag of money. And what happens is Fabrice gets a nice fat fee as the, as the bookie for brokering the deal. Okay, clear conflict of interest here, right? Fabrice owns the horse, okay, but he's also recommending somebody to the trainer, not telling these people who are betting uh, that the horse is gonna win, that the guy who was helping feed the horse with dog food is actually betting against the horse. So clearly you can see a conflict of interest here. And this is the basis of the lawsuit, okay? That Goldman Sachs owned this, this uh, special purpose vehicle, this uh, synthetic CDO called Abacus, and that it, it convinced the people who were filling it up with mortgage-backed securities or synthetics on mortgage-backed securities to, uh, to let Mr. Paul advise them. Mr. Paul advised them to fill, to fill the vehicle with the worst possible mortgages or the uh, swaps on the worst possible mortgages. It was real dog food, if you like, that went into this vehicle. 
Meanwhile, Fabrice Goldman or Goldman is going out and telling investors, oh yeah, invest in this thing. You know, if you, if you want to you know, invest in a, in a synthetic CDO based on mortgage-backed securities, this is the one to invest in. So people are giving loads and loads of money to, to, uh, to Goldman to invest in this thing, thinking that the mortgage market is going to go up. Mr. Paul, meanwhile, is making a bet with Goldman Sachs that the mortgage market is going to go down and that this vehicle, which is filled with the worst of the worst, is going to really hit the ground hard. It's not going to make any money whatsoever. What happens when the mortgage market collapses? These guys are out of the money. All the money goes through to Mr. Paul. In the end, Mr. Paul, which was in fact the hedge fund Paulson & Company, made a billion dollars. And that's what these guys lost. Okay? Now this is the center of, the, uh, of, this, of this suit. The question is, how legal is this? Because Goldman's, one of Goldman's defenses is going to be that investment banks do this kind of thing all the time. They're always on both sides of the trade. They provide liquidity in the market. You know, on the one hand, they might, uh, they might um, allow a, uh, a company or an investor to take a position on one side. They might sell him something. And on the other hand, they might hedge against that to cover their own risk. Okay, they might think that the guy's wrong. And they might want to bet against him. They'll say that there's nothing wrong with that. But the issue, the central issue here is this conflict of interest. The fact that Goldman Sachs was selling stuff to investors without telling them that Paulson and Company was actually an advisor in filling this stuff with rubbish and then betting against it. So that's the real, kind of, the real issue here, because in the end, what this did was made Paulson and Company and Goldman Sachs extremely rich. And these guys, these investors who invested in these CDOs but weren't told what was going on, the reality of what was going on behind it, very badly needing a drink. I think of that, eh? Smile on its face. Oh, I've actually, I've got, to, I've got to do a little thing here. I'll do that again.